In this video I try to clear up some common misconceptions about Mary. The core problem with Mary among the different Christian groups is that some believe that they must choose between Jesus and Mary. But this is not the case. Jesus is the only one who should be at the center of our hearts, but we can still love and appreciate Mary. If you have a good friend and love your friend, you honor his mother, right? Nah, Jesus is your best friend who gave his life for your sake. So, if we love Jesus, then it only makes sense that we would also want to honor his mother. Epiphanes said that those who dishonor Mary also dishonor his master. Why shouldn't we love and respect her as much as Jesus does? If we believe that Jesus Christ is the true son of God, as both Catholics and Protestants do, in that case we must admit that the Holy Trinity has a special relationship with this young woman, a relationship that will remain eternally. That's why Catholics refer to her as the daughter of the Father, mother of the Son, and the bride of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's see Mary through some Bible stories. When Mary visited Elizabeth, Elizabeth said to her, But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? David asked the same question in 2 Samuel when he visited the Ark of the Covenant. David housed the Ark of the Old Covenant. Now, Mary houses the living word of God in her womb. So Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant. Elizabeth refers to Mary as the New Ark. And Mary declares that all generation will call me blessed. Thus, when we call Mary blessed, we fulfill a Bible promise. By the way, Martin Luther and John Calvin also called Mary the Blessed Virgin and the Mother of God. Mary is all over the Bible. Mary is in the first few chapters of Matthew's and Luke's Gospel. She is there at the crucifixion in St. John's Gospel when Jesus said, Woman, behold your son. This is not just a practical message for John, but it's also Jesus' last wish that all of his followers would take her as their spiritual mother. And let's don't forget that Mary was the first Christian. And what a Christian. She is there in Revelation chapter 12. Mary is the woman who gives birth to a man who would rule over the world. Now, who is this man? Of course, Jesus. As a result, the woman who is his mother must be Mary. She is the woman clothed by the sun, and she has a crown of 12 stars on her head. By the way, during Marian's apparitions, they often saw some miracles. So, she has a crown in Revelation chapter 12 that declares her a queen, and she was in heaven. As a result, she is the queen of heaven. But there is one more reason we can call her queen of heaven. It's no secret that Jesus comes from the line of David. In fact, in the Davidic kingdom, the queen was actually the king's mother. If Jesus is the king of heaven and Mary is indeed the mother of God, she deserves to be called the queen of heaven. If we jump back to Genesis, there were Adam and the woman. After the fall, she was renamed Eve because she lost her dignity. Since the fall, Eve is not called woman, but Mary is by Jesus. So, she is the woman in Genesis 3.15, I mean Mary, when God said, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. So Jesus honored his mother as the new Eve, and this is a belief that dates back to the earliest days of Christianity. The snake or dragon is the one who defeats Eve in Genesis. The roles are reversed in Revelation. In the woman clothed with the sun, the new Eve triumphs over the dragon. There is the question, why do Catholics pray to Mary? First of all, Catholics don't and never will worship Mary. We love and honor her and not worship her. We always worship Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit, but it's highly scriptural to also call the intercession of others to pray for us. Prayer means to ask something, so prayer is a request for her. In Luke chapter 7, for example, the Roman centurion asked Jesus to heal his servant. His request was answered by Jesus. Although the servant's faith was not what healed him, his master's faith and prayers did. We pray to Mary to help us and say some good things for our sake. We can see her intense intercession power during the Cana wedding. When Mary, Jesus' mother, intercedes on our behalf alongside her son, as she did at Cana, what an incredible power it must have. It was clear to the early Christians. They were also praying to Mary. There is proof that 200 years after the birth of Christ, Christians are already praying to the Blessed Mother. In Egypt, historians found the Marian prayer on Papyrus 470 with the following words. Under your protection, we take our refuge, Holy Mother of God. The portrait of Mary and the child was painted on the walls of the catacombs by the first Christians. Mary is the mother of our Savior and the spiritual mother of all of us.
of us. Mary leads us to Jesus. She wants to help you open your heart and put Jesus in the first place in it. Jesus is the only way to the Father, but there are many ways to get to Jesus. And Mary is one way to approach Jesus. Thanks for watching. If you got value from the video, please smash like and subscribe. God bless you.